I was at the local store yesterday and uh, I picked up uh, a couple of these uh, neat little devices there. They're called mag jigs and they are switchable magnets. Um, these are, they come in various sizes. This one here is um, the bigger size, I guess. Um, this one here is a 30 millimeter uh, magnet. Uh, it actually takes, uh, the magnet itself is 30 millimeters, but the, uh, the housing, the hole that you have to drill in the wood is 40 millimeters. So I also picked up a 40 millimeter uh, Forstner bit to do that. And um, they're really quite neat. You can turn them on, you can turn them off just by simply uh, turning the dial. Uh, let me show you. So I'm at my table saw and uh, you can see that um, it's uh, just a regular uh, magnet but you can see that it doesn't uh, do anything until you turn the dial. So I'm going to turn the dial on and now you can't lift this off. It is, it's on there and uh, it won't move. And all you have to do is simply turn the dial and it comes right off. So uh, they say this one's rated at 150 pounds. Now that's 150 pounds probably pulling straight up. I'm sure if you really tried to slide it, you could. Um, but uh, I think this is, uh, turn, the, turn the switch and it comes right off. It's fantastic. They are already made three quarters of an inch uh, deep. So a regular three quarter inch uh, piece of wood, um, these things will fit right on. Uh, they have the option of putting uh, some screws in it to hold it down permanently. I'm not going to do that. Uh, these things are, uh, well, I find them fairly expensive. They are regular $35 uh, uh, for me. I bought them on sale for 30 um, I ordered four, but I only got two right now. The other two will be coming in uh, some other day. And um, so I'm going to not put the screws into the wood. This way I'll just pop this thing in the wood, turn the thing on, and, uh, and it'll just hold the wood down by itself. And when I want to use it on another jig or another place, I just simply um, take, it, take it off the wood. So that's what I'm going to do. Let me show you. Uh, I think I'm going to try to build a feather board with this right now. So uh, let's go through that. So I took a piece of hardwood. I don't know what kind of hardwood this is, um, but it's three quarters of an inch thick. So you can see that the magnet will fit uh, perfectly once you drill your holes in there. Now you can make feather boards any size you want. Um, I'm going to cut mine to five inches wide and um, we'll go from there. So there's my hardwood cut at five inches. Now you can cut your angles at whatever you want. I'm thinking uh, for a feather board, the steeper the angle, the more the fingers will push towards the fence. Um, if you have it at a shallow angle, uh, it will keep it there, and, uh, but your fingers won't move as much. So I'm thinking I'm going to cut it at a fairly steep angle just to see how that works. I, I would rather have it pushing against the fence and uh, so I'm going to try it at uh, maybe even a 45 degree angle. Now I'm just going to pick a number here, but I'm going to make the finger length uh, three inches long. So I've raised my blade as far up as it will go, uh, trying to get uh, the cut to be uh, uh, as straight uh, as it can be. Uh, I'm going to set my fence at uh, one quarter inch intervals and cut all the way up to the line, all the way down. And um, I'm going to move my fence one quarter inch every time. My blade is three thirty seconds of an inch uh, uh, thick, therefore my fingers will be at five thirty seconds. Okay, so now I want to drill some holes to hold the magnets on and um, I want to place them in various locations. Maybe drill four holes to give me more uh, flexibility. So uh, I can drill, you know, two holes here and maybe a couple more further back to be able to use them on different tools. So 
I'm going to keep it in line with the 45 degree angle and I'm going to uh, start drilling my holes. Okay, so there it is. Four holes. I can uh, just drop in the magnets. They just drop right in. Easy. And uh, you can put your board, let's say I want to rip this, put it up against my fence. Put the feather board tight up against it. I'm just going to hold it tight with my hands and turn down the locks. And now that doesn't move. And you can see keeps it tight up against the fence. It's beautiful. That board's not going anywhere. And that's it. I can... Uh, I made the holes closer because then I'll be able to use it even at my uh, my jointer. Let me show you. So here's my jointer. It's a six inch jointer and uh, you can see that uh, I needed the two holes farther up uh, because the ones back here won't quite be uh, up on the jointer. So uh, again, just drop in your magnets and uh, place it tight up against the board. Turn the magnet on and it's not going anywhere. And now you simply feed your board all the way through. It's perfectly safe. I've got a 12 by 14 foot shop. It's a room in my basement. And every time I want to use my router, I have to take it out from underneath the table and put it on top of my table saw. And of course, it's 10 on 10. It just moves around. I usually have to try to clamp it down, put boards at the back, clamp them down, so as when you're feeding the wood, you don't want this thing to slide back and forth. This would be a perfect job for the mag switches. I have a piece of three quarter inch plywood. I'm going to rip two strips three inches wide. So now I'm going to cut these to 15 inch lengths. And now I'm going to round these corners just to make it look good. Now I'm going to drill the holes for the magnets. And now I'm going to fasten the router table down to these new braces. Well there it is. Now take your two magnets, put them in the holes, Turn the knob, and this puppy isn't going anywhere. That's going to be a lot better for me. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'm sure there's a lot more uses for these mag switches. Um, thank you very much. Have a good day.